Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast Radio Show. Coming to you on this Saturday, September the 19th, 2020. Hopefully it finds you staying safe and staying sweaty all at the same time. And if you're watching on YouTube, welcome, you guys. As you can see, we are decorating the office in full force here. So it's very colorful and eclectic. That is for all of you watching. And for me, this has basically become my man cave here since... I own a home, uh, but I'm married. So for all the dudes out there, that means you own the home, but nothing actually in the house was put up by you. Like, I've talked about this before on the podcast. I look around my house, I'm like, there's not one thing on the walls, not one thing on the shelf, not one thing anywhere that was picked out by me or put up by me because that's just how my wife likes to roll. And uh, that was what I would call losing losing the small battles so you can win the big ones, my friends. And I'm not a real uh, home decor kind of guy, so I can I can take the L on that one. But uh, basically, uh, my office, my podcast studio here, has become my man cave of all the stuff that I would put up in my house if my wife was like me. But she's not, which is a good thing. So anyways, that has nothing to do with today's podcast, but just we are decorating in my very messy unique way in full force here but today's podcast is going to be quick i literally just got done with a <clears throat> excuse me terrible uh little met kind of workout i took myself through. that's probably the hardest i have punched it by myself in a long time in terms of the metabolic stuff i kind of have that bike ski cough going on here which is just it's been a while and uh i, I don't miss it for sure i went through a little uh 20 ski cows 10 four range of motion dead stop pull-ups uh, 20 salt bike cows, and then 10 push-ups. Subtract two and subtract one every round as you go. So then you go 18 ski cows, nine pull-ups, 18 bike cows, nine push-ups, and all the way down to zero, resting as you need to. And uh, it took me about 28 minutes, and I'm feeling it for sure. Definitely, that was not... Uh, if you if you chase quality reps, that is not a fun, fun workout to do, especially if you're doing real pull-ups. If you're doing the the, the kipping kind of crappie flop shit, then uh, obviously it's way easier. But if you're doing legit pull-ups and you weigh over 200 pounds like I do, it is no no easy feat. So I am hanging on by a thread right now. But I want to do this podcast today for a couple of reasons. One, Heather's probably going to come on tomorrow and we have a more complex one to share with you guys. And then we're in the process here of updating all the podcast equipment uh, we're doing a different amps and different mic setups, so it's going to be it's going to be to the next level, if you will. So my gift to everybody listening, hopefully it's a little bit crispier, a little bit cleaner. The transitions, everything will be just in place. But this came to me from a buddy of mine. I want to say about a week or so ago, and uh, as a reminder of, of why you're friends with the people you're friends with, right? And sometimes there's no particular rhyme or reason. A lot of times it's because maybe you, you grew up in the same neighborhood and there are the people who live down the street from you and you just, you created a bond, you grew up, you know, with similar interests. Maybe you kept them similar. Maybe you drifted off differently. But for the most part, you know, you have a similar mindset, even at the base level. Even if you don't all verbalize it or share it, you kind of all have the same ideology of of what's important and how you live your life and there might be things you completely disagree on and that's what I think friends are is where you can have the same base in ideas but have disagreements on individual things and I think you should I think it'd be completely unhealthy to be friends with people who believe all the same things you believe you loved all the same sports teams you liked all the same athletes and all the same artists and all the same movies the exact same it would be strange there's no competition in that there's no growth in that there's no healthy debate in that but with that said the last couple of days i've just been getting messages from a handful of my homies and uh this podcast is going to be one of them it's actually a pdf document that uh my homie john Leica had sent me and uh just talking about perspective and a lot of the same things that i touch on and, and he read it and was vibing it and shared it with me and it's I've talked about something similar before and you guys can fact check me as I go through this but I've read similar uh, articles to this before that kind of 
echo the same thing, if you will, on you know where we fit in in the world, what the world really looks like, and how lucky we are to actually be in it. But yet we get caught up in our own bullshit, uh, especially now in this season of life. Um, and I'll touch on that in a second. But he had sent me this, and then uh, my best friend and I have been uh, just trading texts back and forth. He uh, he built a new house uh, in Minneapolis there. And uh, he has a basement gym that he's, he's kind of building out. And so I sent him a program. And so he's kind of sending me, you know, some of his lifting numbers and what he's doing. And then I'm sending him uh, some David Goggins videos. And we're kind of just joking back and forth with that. And then our other homie, uh, who actually lives here in the Valley, had sent us just some random Tupac lyrics and some uh, this Dr. Dre lyrics from The Chronic. Just things that, you know, remind us, why, A, why we're friends, because we're cut from the same cloth. But you kind of laugh together. Uh, you know, you listen to the song, you, you remember things about your childhood, hanging out together, and just puts you in a good mood, right? Like for me, you can put on Dr. Dre the Chronic anytime, and it's like, I'm vibing to that shit, because I think that's, I had that in like sixth grade. It reminds me of like when I, you know, thought I had the most swag ever, and I was like trying to be the, the fly of sixth grader listening to Dr. Dre the Chronic on my, on my Discman, if you will, for all you people that are old enough to know what a Discman is. But uh, he had sent that. And then my, our other good homie, Matt, just posted today. Uh, it looks like a, a presidential sign, right? It looks like one of those big yard signs, and it is. And he has it, and it says, presidents are temporary, Wu-Tang is forever, 2020. And I'm like, I'm gonna reshare that on my Instagram story right now, because that's why we're friends. Because he saw that, thought it was super dope, put it up, and I'm like, that is why we are friends. And so we all have this, this similar mindset. You know, we, we all like the same things, basketball and you know gangster rap and the same movies and all the things we enjoy but yet is as, as, as fucked up as we all are and as many problems as we all have as individuals and the, and the trouble we got into as kids and the knucklehead stupid shit um we've done we're all here and we're all to our core really good people even the friends of mine who have you know been arrested and, and went to jail and, and done stupid things in their youth they're really good people. And I know sometimes for people on the outside to hear that, it's it's hard to understand, but they're really good humans at their core. And my friend had sent me this, and I wanted to share it with you guys, especially now because we're in this, you know, kind of cancel culture time where it's like anytime somebody says something wrong, we're going to just, we're going to burn them at the stake. We're going to just fucking roast them for that. And I don't believe that is correct. I don't think we should be doing that. Like somebody could post something on Instagram 5,000 times of just positivity and giving value. And then they post one thing that you don't agree with, or they post one thing that is, you know, what you would consider like that's wrong. And we're going to, you know, cancel that person forever because they made a mistake or they did something that you didn't agree with. I'm not a fan of that at all. We all make mistakes. We all err. We all stumble. We all fall. We all fuck up. There's things we all do wrong. I don't believe canceling somebody, like almost everything you can come back from. Obviously there's certain things like if you become a serial killer, probably not that, right? But for the, the sake of argument, normal things in life we do, like we shouldn't be part of that. We shouldn't be vilifying people in our lives because, you know, they have a different religious belief than us, or, you know, they took a different career path than we took, or, you know, they choose to go out in public while you choose to stay home. They choose to vote red while you vote blue, they think, you know, this political party over that political party, we shouldn't be vilifying people and canceling them out of our lives because they think differently than we do. You can still be friends with people even if you don't have the same religion. Like, I don't even know why I have to say that, but sometimes I feel like it needs to be said in today's world. Like, you can still be friends with somebody if they're a Republican and you're a Democrat or vice versa. If you're, you know, if you're Jewish, and they're Catholic, like you can still be homies, like, but yet we get so, it's like this tribalism, right? Like we get so wrapped up in our own community and that's part of what makes life great is like, we're all part of a team. Like you love the Vikings, my buddy loves the Packers. It doesn't mean that I hate him. I think he's weird because he likes the Packers, obviously, because I'm a, you know, Skull Vikings fan. But the point is, is that we can differ in, in certain beliefs and still be friends and still get along. And I think if you looked at the world in a smaller circle, as opposed to really understanding how big it is, you would realize how lucky you are just to even be here. And a lot of times the things, 
we waste energy on are things that really you shouldn't pay any mind to. And that's just what prompted in my brain as he sent me this and I was reading through it. So I think right now it's the most divided I've seen, you know, people. And maybe it's the social media that does it. Maybe it's always been this way. It just hasn't been as transparent or people haven't been as vocal about certain things. And there's good and bad that comes with it. And I think the vast majority of the human race is positive. I think 99% of us want to see other people succeed. We want everybody to have a job that they don't hate. They want everybody to be healthy. They want everybody to be happy and feel safe and feel like they have an opportunity to grow and to learn and to advance. I think 99% of us feel that. And I believe there's like a 1% that doesn't. And there's 1% that's just bitter and angry and pissed. And they want to see other people, you know, suffer and fail. And they, they want to talk shit about them. And they do take joy in other people's misery. But I, I feel that's such a very, very, very small percentage of humans. The problem is, is that, you know, the, however you want to phrase it, the trolls or the haters, that segment of people is just so fucking loud on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever platform you choose to see. And you have to mute it and you have to drown it out and you have to really be able to think on another level when you see that. Understand that that is the small, small minority and the majority of people don't follow that belief system and the majority of people want you to be successful and happy and they're willing to probably help you. Your neighbors are probably you know more willing to help you out in a time of need than, well, I hope you know they lose their house and go homeless. I don't think very many people believe that or think that. So when you see these things that are, you know, dividing and negative, and if you you feed into the cancel culture and if you feed into the fear panic of the news and the programming, which I believe is all horse shit, you have to understand that most people don't follow that negative ideology. They might be louder because, you know, the example I give is, you know, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I've never once left a review. And I guess I probably should moving forward. I listen to a handful of podcasts and I don't, you know, go on there and I'm a lazy ass. I don't go on there and give them all a five star and drop them all reviews. Sometimes I do, but I haven't every single one. And maybe I should moving forward. That's what I mean is that how many times have you saw a video of maybe mine or somebody that you think shared a great fitness video or they shared a great motivational talk or they shared a quote or they shared something funny and you didn't like it. You didn't comment on it. You didn't share it. And that's what I mean by typically the, the people who are spreading positivity just aren't doing it enough. They're not as vocal about it. They're not as proactive about it. Probably because you have a job and a wife and kids and you're busy. But man, the haters, the haters will be there. And they're, they're typically the first ones to talk shit and leave negative stuff behind. So just know the positivity far outweighs the negativity, even if you don't see it and experience it up front. So with that said, I'm going to read here this lightning in a jar PDF that my homie John had sent me. And it goes like this. If you could fit the entire population of the world into a village consisting of 100 people, maintaining the proportions of all people living on Earth, that village would consist of 57 Asians, 21 Europeans, 14 Americans, and that's North, Central, and South America, and then eight Africans. That is what the world would look like. So if you shrunk us all down to 100 people with the proportions at scale, 57 Asians, 21 Europeans, 14 Americans, North, Central, and South, and eight Africans, there would be 52 women and 48 men. I like those odds. 30 Caucasians and 70 non-Caucasians, 30 Christians, and 70 non-Christians, 89 heterosexuals, and 11 homosexuals. Six people would possess 59% of the wealth, and they would all come from the U.S. How, how crazy is that one, right? Six people would possess 59% of the wealth, and they would all come from the United States of America. 80 would live in poverty. If they shrunk us down 
to 100 people. You guys understand how lucky you are if you are listening to me on your fucking iPhone, right? And, and it, I don't want to go crazy here. If you're driving in your 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 car or beyond, if the world was down to 100 people, six people would possess 59% of the wealth, 80, per, 80 people, 80%, 80 would live in poverty, 70 would be illiterate, 50 would suffer from hunger and malnutrition, one would be dying, one would be being born, one would own a computer, one would own a computer, and one, yes, only one would have a university degree. Does that not blow your mind of how lucky you are? And you guys can fact check me on this, that this is exactly to the T. If it's not, it's gotta be damn close to on the dot. I'm sure it shifts obviously year by year. But if they shrunk us down to 100 people, one person would own a computer. How many of you listening have two, three, four, five computers at your house? Or at least a computer, four TVs and three iPhones and an iPad and you know Alexa, or Sonos, or whatever it may be, and one person would have a degree. How many of you listening to me right now have a, have a degree? I would guess probably nine out of 10 of you have some form of college training, and almost all of you have at least one, if not, you know, an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's degree, or the, the fancy doctors who are listening to me out there. If we looked at the world, obviously in this way with these numbers, the need for acceptance and understanding, I think would be obvious. Yet we don't because we get so wrapped up in our own bullshit oftentimes. And I guess that's, that's part of the, you know, the beauty and the flaw of us as humans, right? Because, you know, we don't have you know, infinite time. Like, it is running out. And so I think we should consider the following, right? Like, if you woke up this morning in good health, you have more luck than a million people who are not going to live through the week. So if you woke up today in good health and you feel good, you can run, you can jump, you can move, you can skip, you are lucky than a million people who are not going to make it through the week. And if you have never experienced the horror of war, the solitude of prison, and the pain of torture, and you're not close to death from starvation, then you are better off than 500 million people right now. So if you guys have never had to live through the horror of war and the solitude of prison and the pain of like legit torture and you're not close to starvation, you're better off than 500 million people. And that's why I share the quote all the time. I'll get to it in a second. I don't want to get lost here. If you can go to your place of worship without fear that someone will assault you or kill you, then you are luckier than 3 billion. That's right. 3 billion people. If you can go to church or wherever you choose to worship and pray and however you choose to do it, and you don't have the fear when you drive to church or your synagogue or your place of where you pray, um, if you don't have the fear that someone's gonna assault or kill you on the spot, then you're luckier than three billion people. That alone puts you in a pretty unique category. If you have a full fridge, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you are wealthier than 75% of the world's population. That puts you in the upper three-fourths of all people breathing on the planet right now. And if you currently have money in the bank, in your wallet, or a few coins in your purse, you are one of eight of the privileged few people among those hundred in the world who are not living in that poverty range. If your parents are still alive and still married, you, my friend, are a very rare individual. I never have really shared that luxury, which a lot of you, it's, you know, you're in, you're in rare air. I promise you that. If someone sent you a message this week, or if you can hear me speaking right now, you're extremely lucky because somebody's thinking of you. And if somebody has sent you a text this week or an email, understand how lucky you are because you don't comprise one of the two billion people on the planet who cannot read. Yes, there's an estimated about two billion people on this planet who cannot read. That actually blows my mind. And so, what's the takeaway? Work, 
like you don't need the money. Love like nobody has ever hurt you. Dance, my friends, like nobody is watching. Preferably like Kevin Bacon Footloose or Swayze and Dirty Dancing. Or like my wife after two drinks listening to Juvenile back that ass up. Sing like nobody is listening. And live as if this was paradise on earth. And what I would urge you to do is send this message to your friends, um, you know, and really understand how lucky you are to, to be here. And I've done podcasts before on luxury problems, and I've, I've shared this quote a million times. Someone else, you know, is praying for the things you take for granted. And I believe that to be 100% true. And on the same note, I've shared this a hundred times before. If we all threw our problems in a pile in the middle of the room and you could see what the world was dealing with, if they shrunk us down to a hundred people and they got us all in a basketball gym, right? We all threw our shit in the middle of the room and you saw where you rank compared to everybody else, you would be like, holy shit, man. I got it pretty good. Because perspective and gratitude is real. And I understand this year has been what I have termed a shit show or a dumpster fire, if you will. And it has been less than fun. Um, I've tried to make the absolute best of it. And there's been days where it was stressful. There were days where I couldn't sleep real well. There was days where I just couldn't feel right. You can go back and listen to the podcast and you can hear me say it. You can probably, you know, if you listen close enough, hear it in my voice. It's just a weird, strange time. and. Just two days ago, I f like it was yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I finally started to feel like a, a little bit more normal. Like back to like what, what my life has been for the past probably decade plus. Like I finally felt like I had some my fucking swag back. Like I walked in here like Conor McGregor strutting in the ring. You know what I'm talking about, like a little McGregor strut. And uh, it felt good. It, it, just, it felt nice. I felt like I could be positive. I, I felt like I could give back to people at my full capacity. It was great. And I understand like why this year has not been ideal. Obviously my business was closed down for six months in person, which was not fun, you know, socially, mentally, economically, it's obviously not ideal not to be open. Uh, my wife being furloughed, you know, for six months, uh, my grandma dying, not being able to see my family or my friends. It sucks shit, man, and, and it plays, it fucks with your brain, and I think all of you out there can probably agree. And with that said, if I looked at the world from a range of 100 people, I would be in like that top, you know, 90. I would, I'd be, I, if you're talking like how lucky you'd be, like one being like the, the worst person in the world who is dying, up to like 100 who would be, you know, the happiest, healthiest, richest person, I would have to be like number 94 or 93 or 92 or somewhere in there, right? Like that's how fucking lucky I am. And it, it is is not fun as it's been and stressful and weird and awkward and strange. I, I have perspective on that and understand like where I rank. And I think a lot of you listening would rank right next to me. You'd be pretty close because you have money in the bank. You have a roof over your head. You got a car, you got clothes, you got an iPhone. You got Netflix, iTunes, you can drink Starbucks coffee. You can probably still, you know, travel on a plane. You can go see people. You can do certain things. Like we have luxuries that we don't understand. And is the world perfect? No. And is it strange and weird? Yeah, for sure. And hopefully we're moving through it quickly. And we're on the very back nine of it. Hopefully getting close to just, you know, being done with the round of this shit. But just take a step back for a second and realize how lucky and how gifted you are and where you probably rank in the whole scope of the world, all things considered. And while that might not be ideal, it might not have been as fun. And you know, you might not be able to buy the same things and this might be a pause on maybe paying off your debt or maybe a pause on some of your investments or maybe you can't you know, do everything exactly the same way you always did it. Just know you're pretty lucky and have gratitude for even the smallest things like waking up just being healthy because a lot of people don't have the same luxury that you have today and that's all it's just a reminder and uh my good friend sent it to me and again i didn't get to see him this year I usually see him at least every fourth of july 
He's been out here a couple times. And uh, that's for a lot of my friends and a lot of my family. And admittedly, it sucks. And I feel like this shit season of life, you know, it, it, our reaction to it stole that from me. And uh, even with that said, I'm very blessed to be able to live, I guess, in this era, in this time. And, you know, the gift and the curse of social media is, yes, we can see everything all the time. And people have become addicted to it. And they overreact to certain things. And they, they cut and they edit and they share certain stuff that doesn't really paint the full picture. And as much as it plays with people's brains in the comparison game, and as much as I think that's completely stupid... The positive thing about it is, is that we can send emails, we can send texts, we can video chat, we can at least stay connected in that way a little bit. And as we slowly come back and start to visit friends and family and, and do things, it hopefully this season of life served as a reminder of like, wow, I don't want to ever take anything for granted again. Not, you know, the annoying time with your friends and family, like maybe it's on the holidays or when they vacation or the little, you know, things that they do that, that maybe annoyed you, just realize if you never got to see them again or do that again, you'd be really sad and you wish you could. So that's all it's is. Just a reminder to have perspective and gratitude, you guys, of where you rank in the world and how awesome your life really is. Even though admittedly, this year has sucked big time, but take it all with a grain of salt and uh, keep it moving forward. Stay as positive as you can be. If there's anything that we can do for you, Anything we can answer, anything we can share, I'm happy to do so. Um, I appreciate you guys for listening. If you happen to be on iTunes right now, stop. Don't be a lazy ass. Please drop it a five star. Leave a couple of comments. And then I promise to not be a lazy ass myself and go drop Dave Ramsey a five star. Maybe drop Rogan a five star. Leave a couple of comments on there and the rest of the podcast that I listen to uh, to show my appreciation for them. So even though they're probably getting way more negative feedback than I am, they can see a positive one come through and that hopefully that can be the gas to keep them going. Or hopefully if they're saying they're like me and they just post and then run away and stop reading the comments altogether because there's really no good that can come from it. So I appreciate you guys. Have perspective, have gratitude. Even though admittedly this season of life might suck and you might be going through some individual bullshit, uh, just know there is light at the end of the tunnel. I promise you that. Just keep surrounding yourself with good people, good messages, and keep moving forward every single day, at least one little step at a time. And I promise you, it will get better. So thank you, guys. Uh, we're back on the podcast tomorrow, I believe, with Heather. Diving in deep for something a little bit longer and more detailed. So until then, eat well, train hard, be nice to people. And please, you guys, just keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.